Hey guys, what's up? My name's Ines. I write kissing books. And today I am having a bit of a breakdown about buttons. Do you know how to button up your ax? Let's break it down. Many of the tricks and tools from script writing work amazingly well in novel writing. My favorite trick from episodic television writing is using buttons to end a scene or a chapter. What's a TV button? Buttons are like punctuation marks, like a period, an exclamation point, or a question mark. A button is a punctuation mark at the end of an act in a show or a scene or a chapter in a book. You've got periods that are statements that the sequence is over, that there's no loose ends and everything is resolved. Use these sparingly. They can give the audience too much of a breather. You have exclamation points, which provide an impact. It heightens strong emotion. Maybe there's a literal bang that goes off. Also use these sparingly because they can overwhelm a reader if used back to back to back. There's the question mark, which is a statement of inquiry. This can add suspense. It lets the reader know that there's more that's coming and that there will be an answer, which is different than the ellipses because the ellipses indicates that there's an omission of words from quoted material or a hesitation or trailing off of dialogue or thought. It's to be continued. More is coming, but the answer is not quite guaranteed. And then there's the dash. The dash is an interruption of thoughts an interjection, a pause, it's abrupt. The dash is a really handy device if you're being playful, if you're telling your reader that you're about to take on a different tact or a different path that's gonna be connected in some way to what you just said, but you're gonna veer off course. In the pilot episode of Scandal, it's divided into five acts. Acts typically end at a commercial break and the commercial break is a dangerous time for television writers because the audience now has a choice of getting up to use the bathroom or grab a snack or worse. They could turn the channel. If you study the end of each act in Scandal or Grey's Anatomy or Private Practice or Bridgerton, <laughs> rhymes buttons up each act by ending by raising the stakes before the commercial break. The punctuation marks she places at each break serves to keep the audience pinned in their seats. We're going to take an in-depth look at the structure of the acts of the pilot episode of Scandal. You can check the streaming apps to see if Scandal is available for watching online, or you can go to the show note and download the script for free. In the pilot episode of Scandal, Act 1 ends with a murder suspect walking into the office with literal blood on his hands. Act two sees that murder investigation and raises us a POTUS, president of the United States, embroiled in a sex scandal. In act three, Olivia's conservative soldier client, the alleged murderer, gets arrested because he refuses to be outed. By the end of act four, Olivia handles the POTUS sex scandal by destroying the life of the woman who accused the president of seducing her. And then that, that supposed mistress tries to kill herself. In the middle of act five is where we learn the biggest scandal of them all, that Olivia and the president were having an affair. By the end of the show, the stakes are raised sky high when Olivia, feeling betrayed by her married ex-lover, <laughs> takes the president's mistress on as a client. I strongly feel that these act ends are all exclamation points, which I just said don't do. <laughs> but she Shonda rhymes. So there are also a lot to cover. So this breakdown will focus only on the first act of the pilot episode of Scandal. The first act of a television show is known as the setup. A setup has three goals. It should be quick, it should be immediate, and it should grab attention. Rhymes uses a mix of exclamation buttons and dash buttons. Let's see how. In act one, scene one, the setup starts immediately with the first scene. We're introduced to the newcomer, Quinn, who's trying to escape an undesired blind date. Rhymes grabs our attention with witty dialogue delivered by attractive individuals. Quinn believes Harrison is her date and she wants to ditch him. Harrison is nonplussed by Quinn's attempts. Instead, he seems quite amused. We want to see how this ends. And surprise, it's not the man of every woman's dreams 
that she's getting that Quinn is getting set up with. No, it's better. It's Quinn's dream job. And of course, every 21st century woman is going to jump at the chance of her dream job. Though Quinn doesn't shout out loud at the prospect of working for Olivia Pope, strong feelings are written all over her face at Harrison's offer. And she exclaims, I want to be a gladiator in the suit with wide eyed quiet and awe, giving us an exclamation button. In the second scene, we meet the famous Olivia Pope and her dashing rogue of a colleague, Stephen. As they're preparing to walk into danger, Olivia momentarily halts the conversation that she's having with Stephen about his impending engagement to smooth over a dilemma with two Russian bad guys pointing pistols at each other. Olivia comes off as a badass, as uber confident and smart. And with the deal settled, she and Stephen take their package and continue their banter about his impending nuptials, as though no one was just in mortal peril. The scene starts with Olivia and Stephen, then there's a conflict which is resolved, and then the scene concludes with Olivia and Stephen continuing their banter. It's a set of dashes. In grammar, the dash allows something to be in the middle. It breaks you off and it veers you in a different direction, and then it comes back around, which is exactly what happens in this scene. The scene after that, starts with Quinn, our novice, coming into the extraordinary world of Olivia Pope and Associates. Through Quinn, we begin to learn the rules of this new world. Olivia's crew is introduced along with their respective duties and Quinn is quickly schooled that this is not a law firm, but a firm of problem solvers. We learn that the package that Olivia negotiated for was a kidnapped baby who was promptly picked up by diplomat parents. Another exclamation point at the end of that statement where we see the kid being taken out of the package. The setup is complete by the end of that last scene. Everything and everyone we need to know has been established. Now the story is about to really get moving. When a disabled Iraq war vet appears in the office lobby with blood on his hand. My girlfriend, she's dead, he says. And the police think I killed her. In a comic book, the exclamation point follows the bang. In this scene, the gun has already gone off and we're seeing the effects of the aftermath on his hands. Harrison turns to Quinn and says, welcome to Pope and Associates, exclamation point. Early on in our grade school education, we are taught how to construct sentences in order to get our points across. Today, most of our writing is peppered by the point of periods. Punctuation marks like exclamation points, dashes, and even ellipses. We're told to use these sparingly, but Rhymes and her team pays no heed to that grammar lesson. Their characters shout it out. They are elliptically coy, and they dash with their hearts. And it's paid off for them episode and episode again, show and show again. How can we relate this to our writing? Take a look at the end of your chapters. Treat those like commercial breaks and sew in a button. Instead of a period, can you turn that last scene into a question mark? Maybe send in the ellipsis in that last bit of dialogue. Just as you ramp up the action, add a dash that forces the reader to turn the page. Bookmarks are for the weak. Don't give them a break. Keep them turning the page and button to their seat. Want a more in-depth exploration of pacing? Then try out my course, Patient or Pacing, How to Write a Binge-Worthy Novel in 21 Days at anesswrites.com forward slash PTP for Patient or Pacing. Want to break down shows and movies with me live? Come and hang out with me on Teleparty. You can find out the viewing schedule on anesswrites.com forward slash breakdown. In the meantime, you guys, go and get the words with these new buttons that you're going to play with. As for me, I will try to keep it together until the next time that we break it down. I'll see you then. Bye.